welcome to today's video in in today's video i have been asked by a subscriber to show how to do an axisymmetric model of nano detection test in abacus cae i have already made a video on a 3d nano indentation test and you can have a look at that video which is shown on the top what we have to do in this case we have an indenter which looks something like this in an axisymmetric environment then we have a material where we will indent this indenter this is the zoomed view of the mesh in this area and then obviously we, after the nano indentation we need to show how it really indents and then comes out and then we will try to measure the force and displacement at this point which is which will give us kind of a way how we can vary the elastic properties and find the elastic properties of this material using this standard indentation test so again the problem definition has been sent to me by the subscriber this is the geometry again i think this has been taken from a paper so i'm not going into the detail of the correctness of this 2d axisymmetric assumption but this is how it's done so it's a triangular indenter which has an angle which has this angle of 70.3 degrees a force is applied on the top and it moves at distance of 200 nanometers with the maximum depth and i already told you the angle between this indenter tip the workpiece material is brass and also for modeling purposes what they have done is you have to use a model size such that this indenter effects does not propagate to the boundary so we have to have a model which is big enough so that's for that the height of the workpiece has been chosen to be times the depth maximum depth which is 200 nanometers so it is around 10,000 nanometers other things are it's an elastoplastic material so we have to use isotropic hardening in this case the density is provided to us Young's modulus which is an approximate value is given to us which will be fine-tuned to fit the experimental nano indentation curve for force and displacement and then obviously the initial yield strength is given to us of the material and Poisson's ratio while the plastic part is defined with a linear tangent moduli for isotropic hardening and this is 225 gigapascals again we have to pay attention all the dimensions are in nanometers you see displacements and everything while these are in megapascals and pascals and meters and kilograms so we need to be consistent in our units in abacus because we will be the ones who will be defining everything so for my case i will make all the geometries in millimeters so all the units will be consistent to that millimeter units okay for the mesh it's been as for that paper i think we have to use a triangular mesh or similar mesh for indented and extremely fine quadrilateral mesh for workpiece contact pair is based on master and slave surfaces and indented is a master surface which is normally the case in abacus because they recommend to use the stiffer or harder surface to be the master surface boundary condition the top face is free while the bottom face has a roller connection so it can move slide around on the horizontal plane but cannot move down and also the right face is fixed so so this face has a roller connection this face is completely fixed this is axisymmetric boundary and this face this is a free one free surface basically so that's what is there so now let's get into the abacus and see how we can model this whole thing so that we can get this kind of behavior so see you on the other side let's jump into the problem now so if you remember the geometry of the indenter was such that this angle was 70.3 degrees so what i have done i can show you the dimension it's just a simple sketch so i just make a 3d 2d model in this case and what i have done is i have found the dimensions which are approximately equal to the dimension of that so this is around one exponent minus three in length right while so this is in millimeters again so you can you can you can convert it to meters or, or nanometers whatever based on that similarly i have if you measure this to, to this then this is around 358 exponent minus six millimeters so again i have converted the nanometers and micrometers to millimeters so this is in millimeters then for the second part also as they said this is 50 times 200 nanometers so so if you measure this side this should be around that distance so if i select this point and if i select this point and it should be around exponent minus three so you see it's around 10,000 
nanometers, which is equivalent to 10 exponent minus 3. If you, if you confuse with the units, then for example, how to convert 10,000 nanometers from that input data to millimeters, you can just go to Professor Google and, and ask nanometer to millimeter, it will give you that. And now if I have something in, let's say 10,000 nanometer, then I can convert it to millimeters and vice versa as well. So, so this is how it's being done in this case. Okay. So that's why you have 10 exponent minus 3 here. So, so now I have made the part for the properties. Again, we are given we were given, if you remember, the elastic plastic properties. So we were given the density again. We go back to Google and ask convert the kilogram per milli per meter cube to kilogram per millimeter cube and you can get this value directly from there similarly young's modulus again in the in the paper it was in in the problem description it was 1100 so i started with 110 and then i increased different values so that i can get values which are more close to the experimental data so still it's not fine tuned but i use the last value to be 1200 and again remember this is megapascals now because all the units i'm using here are millimeters so megapascal is, is equivalent to newton per millimeter square poisson's ratio again it was given to us for tangent moduli which was 25 i think in in the slide so we i basically we were given the yield strength of 150 at zero plastic strain and then i define a linearly increasing function so again i use a value of five so that i'm in the safe range but you can use any value here and for that based on the tangent moduli which was 25 i think you can find what will be the stress at that strain so again this is just a computed value for your for this case so we have defined the elastic plastic properties and densities here once we have done that so similar to our previous cases we create a section and in this case again i use a solid homogeneous section and there i select material number one as i have done here so once i do this i'm not saving it here because i already have a section there you see i the next step is to assign the section so again for assignment what you have to do is you just press assign section button select the geometry press done and then you select this thing so i have again already assigned this section so you see it's already assigned and that's why once you assign it it will have a color again if you're not familiar with assigning the properties go back and please have a look at my abacus course which is there on my youtube channel once we have done that we go to assembly module and we bring all the parts together again assembling is very easy you go to instance part select both parts and bring them here as you see here and you see they are like this they look will look like this in this case so i have brought them here and then i have aligned them close to each other so that i don't have to really move a lot of distance when we are simulating so i made it so you can basically use this translate option and maybe you can move this thing from from, from here to here for example or maybe maybe go back as well whatever so if it's far away so you can translate and you can bring it here so you see i'm slightly off that so that i establishes the contact as soon as i apply the boundary condition because if it's far away then it will take a long time to travel and simulation time will increase okay then we do the step which is in this case a general step as you see it's a static analysis we are using although it seems like a dynamic problem because we are using this indenter but what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply a boundary condition which is displacement boundary condition and i will make this whole the indenter to be rigid so i can still survive with the static analysis so it's fine for me what i have done is i have used a total time of 1.5 again this is a rate independent case it might not affect it but just to be on the safe side i use that out of which i will use one 0.5 second to, to push it to a 200 nanometer distance and then rest of the one second will be to bring it back to the initial stop i'm using a stabilization option as well to stabilize my simulation during unloading you can use it or you can avoid it as well for increments i'm using a large number of increments because if your increment goes above this number it will the simulation will stop so i use a large number to avoid that thing my initial time increment is this while the maximum it can go up to is 0 0.01 in this in simulation if, if convergence is really good while the minimum it can go up to is exponent minus 10. So this is my these are my definitions for the step and if outputs are all default i didn't change anything there interactions are the key now so in order to define the interaction between this surface between this surface and this surface because these are the two surfaces which will be in contact with each other 
need to first define the contact properties which are called the interaction properties so you define the interaction properties using create interaction properties and then i select tangential behavior and i select frictionless here then i select the normal behavior and in the normal behavior again i use a default option of hard contact and i also tick allow separation after the contact because it has to move back and the contact will again be a I mean the surface will again be separated so that's what I have done here now I need to define or assign this contact property or interaction property to the surfaces so for that you have to create interaction surface to surface contact and then press continue once you press continue you basically come across this window here where you have to select the surfaces so you can see my master surface is the or generally the stiffer or harder surface so it's this surface while the slave surface is this which is purple or blue colored whatever is you see on the screen right now which is this surface and the interaction property that you see is the interaction property when rest are all default i haven't changed anything there so that's what i have done on this side also this is elastic so what i have done here is i have made it rigid so what i do is i create a rigid body constraint you click on this then it asks you to select the object so i will select this point and then i will select the reference point which i have created here as a reference point for for this case again uh, if you're not familiar with that what you can have to do is you, you can create the reference point when you are in the part module basically when you have part you can create a reference point by going to tools and reference point and then you can assign it anywhere where you want so i have already have a reference point so i'm not going to do it again and once you have the reference point you can just go here and create constraint as, as i did before and then you select the body so click this select this body then you select the point and then you select the reference point here and that's it so it's picked it's picked and you just press ok so that's how you have made this thing as a rigid body before making it rigid body obviously you have to assign some elastic properties so when i was assigning it here so i already did this assign section and i already assigned it the same elastic properties because they will not influence and we will make it rigid so it's just to tick that box that abacus requires the elastic property before you convert a, a elastic property to a rigid body for loading again if you see i have defined a displacement boundary condition here so if i go to the displacements so you see this becomes red so i have it i have made it fixed in one and rotational direction and i move it to a distance of 200 million newton 200 nanometers in negative y direction so that's why it's giving again i have used an amplitude function you can create an amplitude function by create by clicking on this <coughs> tabular and then you can define the time and what will be the amplitude so what i have done here is i have used amplitude function one and you can view it from here so you see at time zero everything is zero at time 0 0.5 my amplitude of displacement will become one so this means one times this 200 nanometer will make it go to 200 nanometers and then at 1.5 it will start to go back to zero so this means it will be linearly going back to the zero that is it will be going upwards again or it's kind of an unloading step this is how you define the the boundary condition or what else was there if you remember there was a roller contact here so we have only we only have to fix it in vertical direction the bottom surface and that's what you see here u2 is fixed in the bottom surface and also on this side everything is fixed so i will fix u1 and u2 along this surface while this surface was free as per the definition from problem definition now coming for the mesh we have to mesh individually each component so you see we have used i have used a mesh size of 2 exponent minus 5 millimeters for this case and i basically the element type i have used in this case is uh, exisymmetric standard linear elements okay with reduced integration also for the other part which which acquired a quadrilateral mesh you see it's a very fine mesh because we need to really capture the deformation which is a very severe around this area and again i have used a similar 3x 3x minus 5 millimeter size element and i have used the same elements as i have used it for the indenter itself so once i have done this then i just go here and i will run the job and i submit and i will run the job i will monitor everything and you can see it goes through everything well and everything is fine it's completed so once it's done you go back to your results
and there you can you can play around with your results so you see your simulation has started and then it goes higher so you see it's you see there is no effect around the bar uh, the surfaces because our bar model is big enough and you see it goes down and then 200 nanometers and then it goes up in 1.5 second and you see some unloading due to, due to the elastic loading while this is the remaining stresses due to the plastic deformation so this is how you do it the other thing is basically to plot the force displacement curve so what you can do you can go to the tools xy data and then manage it so here i have already created some of these properties so you see the properties look something like this so you see this one was a previous one where i used 110 or something so it was pretty low but we have to go to a higher value so what i did was in the second case i used a 210 value and you see my curve goes up so you have to play around with the elastic constant only to shift the curve up and down and then if you have experimental curve you can compare with that and fine tune the elastic property so such that it fits well with the experiment how to get this curve you go here create you say odb output field output and then you select from here you need unique nodal because you, this is only one node or reference point and then you select from here the reaction force in y direction which is 2 rf2 and also the displacement 2 here and then you go to the edit option you press on this and then you say save so once you save this you see you have displacement and this but the problem with this is if you plot this you will see it's negative because everything was going in a negative direction while experimental data is always positive they, they don't have any direction so what you have to do is now you have to operate on this and also this is a function of time so i need to combine a displacement and and reaction force in one graph so what i will do combine I will go operate sorry again I'm too fast maybe so create operate on XY data and then I will say combine then I will go with an absolute value of displacement because if it's negative I want I only want positive as my experiments are positive then I use a comma here which is missing then absolute value of reaction force which can also be negative because it's going in a negative direction and I and I save it as a whatever name I want here so once I have done that, this is my XY data 4 and if I plot this, so you see this is how it looks like. Now if it's not, you can also import the XY data or data for force and displacement from experiment. So you can say create, you can directly copy paste from the keyboard, you can import an ASCII file and once you have that data, you can plot them together. Let's say if you have, this is experimental data, you can just select these two by pressing the control button and you can get, have a comparison and you can keep on changing the properties if this is not fitting well you go back to your properties you change the elastic constant again here let's say something like 3000 whatever and then you go run again you go back to your job you rerun the simulation once you have the results you go back to the results again and check everything is fine and then get the extract the data as i said show, showed you again and you keep on doing it until unless you get a good fit like like this one so i hope in this quick video you got some sense of doing an axisymmetric indentation test and i hope you are able to run the simulation on your own if you want this model i will copy it again in in this in, in on, on the website and it will be available through our website which is 3maxskillshare.com so please visit that if you want to access any of the models thank you very much and i will see you next time